welcome to the Zapata Brand Podcast. And today I'm going to do a quick recap of the Benavitez and Boo Boo fight. Happened last night. Benavitez wins with a six round stoppage, which kind of uh, was where I, I thought it would go. Not that Benavitez was an overwhelming favorite, uh, he, but Boo Boo was kind of untested at this point. And I kind of knew that the, the, the way Benavitez fights was not conducive to a good fight for Boo Boo. Here's why I think what happens is Benavitez gets, once he gets those couple rounds going, he's almost like a locomotive. He keeps going and going and going until he runs you over, which it's a two part question there. Um, one is, would Boo Boo be able to hold him off for as long as he could? And two, how would that transfer into a fight with Canelo? So the first part is obviously the first two or three rounds I gave to Boo Boo. I thought he did well. First, first two and a half rounds. Three at the third round he kind of got hit a little bit, and I thought, oh, this could be the start of it, and it was. Three rounds later, he's out of there. Um, wasn't a, 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 a devastating, you know, beaten, but it it was something that you know you, you got to look at and say this could be this could have been really bad if it went the distance. So. That being said, good good stoppage. You know, he did. There was nothing else there. Um, it would have gotten worse before it got better. That's for sure. Um, and as far as what that does now, uh, there's two things here. If you're Canelo, you've said on record that you would never fight a Mexican, yet I'm hearing he's going to fight Munguia in May. So he's Mexican. You know, so that excuse now is out the window. If you If he didn't have all the belts... And he did, wasn't holding all the belts, and he fought somebody else, no problem. But he has all the belts. He's undisputed. You have to fight David Benavidez next. You know, it's the only thing that makes sense. It's the, only, it's the only possible scenario that would solidify Canelo as the greatest Mexican of our lifetime. I think Chavez was the best that I've seen. But at this point, you know, he's got to do something. I think Canelo has fought everybody. I think this is a young 26-year-old uh, Mexican fighter who would give uh, Canelo all types of problems. Canelo does not like to be a pressure, not, does not like the pressure. He can't handle that pace, that that constant, constant pace. That is exactly what Benavitez does. That the, the, the mold to beat Canelo is similar to that, or a very slick boxer like Mayweather did. But I don't know if you can do that now with Canelo, because Canelo's boxing has gotten a lot better. But does he like the pace? No. He can't, I don't think the pace is something he can handle. With someone like Benavides, who throws a lot of punches, and it's different combinations. He's up, down, back in, back out, with a lot, a lot of pressure. The one, that is the one style that would give him problems, and Benavides is big. Uh, big for that weight class. I give Benavides a lot of credit. He came to fight and just put it on Boo Boo. I think he would do the same situation with Canelo. I think he would put a lot of pressure on him. I think if there's a chance Canelo would get stopped, I don't think he'd be knocked out one punch. I think he would be stopped later on. But that is the one person who I think can stop him at that, at, you know, in this late in his career would be Benavides. Um, he showed tremendous, tremendous ability yesterday. Um, I was one who thought Canelo would lose to Charlo, but I, obviously I was wrong. But, so I guess my picks aren't the greatest here, you know, this, but here's what I think will happen. I think Canelo will fight Munguia in May, Independence Mexican Independence Weekend. And then I think he would have to fight Benavitez in September. I think he has to. What I look for, possibly for Benavitez, is him to fight Molina. Maybe around the same time. Now, if that happens and Benavitez wins, Benavitez has already forced Canelo's hand. You have to fight him. You have to fight him. He's holding up that undisputed division. And I also heard that Benavitez would jump up to 75, possibly fight Bavall. I don't know if that's smart for him to do. He can hold that frame bigger than, I think, Canelo. But that is the only fight, the only fight that makes any sense for Canelo and, and Benavitez right now in September. They're already going to do the May fights. There's no way they fight in May. No way. Now there's 
Uh, uh, there is a lot of people saying Canelo will never, ever, ever fight Benavidez. I can see that because it was a three-fight deal. The only thing that I would see that would be totally a duck is if Canelo wins in May, Benavidez wins in May, Canelo fights somebody else on his on his third and last fight with PBC, not Benavidez. That would be a total duck because that's the only fight that makes sense. Unless he fights that third fight and then next year, Independence Day in May, fights Benavidez and that's his last fight like, where he'd be a free agent and some, find a, a one-off with, with some promoter. That's the only other option I see. But why would he wait that long? Benavidez is getting better. He's going reverse. Not to say he didn't look good his last fight. It just looks like he's getting worse. You know, he's not the he's not the sharp Canelo that fought Danny Jacobs, that fought um <clears throat> that had fought Cotto. And he's not. So he is taking a step back. Benavitas is getting better. He's getting stronger. He's getting more confident. I mean, he improved from his Caleb Plant fight. Benavitas. You know, there were some things that he didn't do so particularly well. Cut off the ring. Use his jab effectively. He that, that's cleared out. He's done that. Um, this fight showed he he it was a mover, and he stopped him in six, and it would have been a worse beating. So I also on the undercard, I would like to say Jose Benavides looked good in lo in a loss. Um, Charlo, there's something wrong with him. I I don't know what it is. Um, if you look at the press conference, something's off. I don't know whether it's a, a drug issue or something outside of the ring. Um, I don't know if it's something mentally going on. There's something definitely off there. That's something to be looked at. Um, but uh, Jose Benavides looked good. I thought he, for, in, a, in a loss, because the guy was a bigger guy, came in overweight, couldn't even make 64 when he agreed to go over the limit. Um, just not a good look for, for Charlo. And where he goes, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. He's got to move up. I mean, he can't even make 160. Uh, and he holds one, and he holds the belt there. Mm, not Not good. Not a good look. So, in a recap, real quickly, um, I kind of figured that that's what was going to happen. I kind of figured uh, Charlo would would win uh, because he's just a little bigger. But I also picked Benavitez to to uh, blow out Boo Boo, which is a win for me. That I you know, and I never pick pick good fights, but I did see that it's the only logical way now in succession to have him fight Canelo. That is the only fight in boxing right now that makes sense. I think Terrence Crawford's going to fight Errol Spence again. Um, I'm hearing at 147, which I didn't think Spence would, would go back to do, but that's what I'm hearing. And what other fight is there? There really is no other fight. You know, you Tyson Fury or Joshua versus Wilder, maybe. Uh, but where are we at here? This, this fight has to be made. Has to be made, and I think it should be made next September. And I think they would do it in a big stadium. Uh, probably, I think Cowboy Stadium. That would that would be make perfect sense, and have that maybe do a nice undercard with maybe um, Charlo fighting somebody, or, or Spence fighting someone from that area. And I think that makes perfect sense. So again, recapping: David Benavitez six round stoppage of Boo Andrade, and uh, Charlo with a decision over Benavitez Jr. Um, good fights in general, but that, I think this wraps up Showtime in December. It wraps up and that's it. No more boxing for Showtime. That is where we're going to look at and say, what's next for boxing? We have a couple things coming down the pipe here in the Zabata brand podcast, um, that we want to do in the amateur level. And we're going to reach out to some people. We're going to do some things there. Hopefully that gets some interest into the boxing. And then that, that kind of, is it like a farm system for professional boxing? Uh, we have some people that are interested in doing it, and that'll be our next step. So look for us doing some uh, some live events um, in the next coming in the next coming months. Okay. That being said, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe to the to, to the channel. We're trying to get to one thousand subscribers. It helps us get those big guests we had, like the Teddy Atlas, like the Boom Boom Mancini, and we got a couple more coming up in the next week that are really good ones. Other than that, remember, don't be envious of what I've accomplished in my life. Be inspired by what you can do in yours. Thanks. Guys. Thanks for watching the Zapata Brand Podcast. Please subscribe to the podcast and listen where all podcasts are available.